Just Keep Breathing by Leanne Beasley You know, being prepared can really help in risky situations, such as the one I encountered on the final day of a checkout dive series that I did for my master scuba diver course. I couldn't wait to get back into the lake and dive. Early that morning, our class members met at the local shop, grabbed our rental gear and threw it into the back of four pickup trucks bound for Canyon Lake near New Brownfells, Texas. An open water class would also be diving at the lake that day, so the atmosphere was a bit chaotic as 20 divers unloaded gear and set up equipment. After I squeezed into my 3mm wetsuit, I grabbed my tank and connected my regulator I noticed that my tank was less than half full. Perhaps an open water student had unknowingly replaced the cap on the, on the valve, causing the tank not to get filled. But I knew I could still get a full tank on the truck. But before I could swap out the tank, one of my classmates asked me to help them find their mask. The entire class rummaged through almost all the bags that were half empty scattered along the rocky shoreline, looking inside the trucks and on the truck beds and all the potential places a mask could be and eventually found it covered up by some clothes in someone's bag. The searching for the mask had really cut into our time for preparation, so we didn't have our usual time to carefully go through everybody's gear. We had to adhere to our schedule. And like a disappointed parent, the instructor began to lecture the master class, harping on and on about how the open water students were already in the water while we were still trying to get ready. He quickly paired us into buddy teams and told us to get a move. I was paired with somebody I knew from class but had never been buddies with before, and unfortunately there was no time to get to know the person beforehand. We were in the water and our tanks slung on our backs and we didn't speak as we shamefully trudged into the lake, spitting into our masks for a last minute defogging. After we swam out to deep water and the class was together, the instructor called out, ready? And he really meant it more as a statement than a question. So we immediately started our descent into the dark, cold and murky lake. The first dive was our deep dive. We had made our dive plans in class the previous day, so we felt pretty prepared and knew what to expect, or at least so we thought. Throughout our descent, I meticulously checked the dive computer on my wrist. I could identify my buddy's location only by the faint glow of his torch so I held on to his upper arm to ensure that I stayed with him the entire dive instead of mistakenly ditching him for some similar dive light. With a lack of visibility, it seemed like I might be floating through darkness forever. Fortunately, the instructor finally illuminated his hand to show us that we could start our ascent for the surface. And as we slowly began to rise, we got into water where the lighting was a lot better. Although it was, we could still see only about three and a half meters. I did feel more comfortable than I had in the dark, but just when I thought I could start breathing easily again, I felt a strange resistance. I took another slow, deep breath, told myself to relax, and realized that something was still clearly wrong. When I looked at my pressure gauge, I saw the needle pointed to zero, and then it hit me like a big truck. I never swapped my tank. I looked up from my depth gauge and couldn't see my dive buddy. I told myself to stay calm and remember what we'd practiced so many times at the three and a half meter deep pool. And there I was, 27 meters underwater, 
and about to employ the very same skills my instructor had drilled into us. I didn't waste any time and I went straight to the closest diver, gave them a very very clear out of air please share air signal and after a brief deer in the headlights moment where they got a bit of a fright, the diver jumped into action. He extended his alternate second stage with me and we shared air throughout our entire slow controlled ascent. We completed a three minute safety stop before surfacing as a team. After we had removed our gear back on shore, the instructor gathered the group for a debriefing. I expected the worst reprimanding of my life, but instead the instructor asked, is everyone all right? And he praised our ability to use our skills in action to safely share air and to terminate the dive in a calm and controlled manner. Later in private, my instructor gave me a hard time about being his only student to ever run out of air, but you can bet that that'll never happen again. While several factors contributed to the situation, it was entirely preventable and luckily it had a positive outcome. In the end, it was a learning experience for the entire team. We experienced the importance of being prepared, staying organized and completing your pre-dive checks. It is ultimately up to the divers to be responsible for themselves. On that day and on that dive, I was the one who was irresponsible. But fortunately, my classmate was there to help me. And I learned a lesson and there was no casualty. So, the lesson is be prepared for the unexpected, but take the initiative and be responsible, keep your cool and above all, follow your training.